if you have recently bought one of these mock mills or are contemplating buying a mock mill, you might be wondering what you can mill with them outside of just whole wheat grains. And if you need to clean them, how easy it is to actually clean them. So in this video, I'll be talking about a few things that you can mill in these mills and that you cannot mill in these mills technically. I am going to show you how to open and clean each one of them and then I'm going to show you the cleaning process. If you're new here on my channel, welcome. My name is Anya at Our Gabled Home where I love sharing heritage homemaking made very simple and I love milling my own flour here. There's nothing better than fresh ground flour for all the nutrients that are still in it and all the flavors and you know exactly what's in it. You can also choose what kind of grains you want to mill outside of let's say wheat. You can grind rye or spelt or einkorn or whatever you have. So let's look at these different mills here and then we'll talk about what you can mill in them. I have here with me um, the what I call sort of like the entry model, the mock mill attachment. If you have a kitchen aid or some other stand mixer, you can attach this and use the motor from your stand mixer to actually mill your grains. I love this one and I have this one and I use it. I have been using it a long time. Then there is a mock mill 100. It's just the kind of output that you get from this that distinguishes it from the mock mill. 200 which has a higher faster output they both of them the 100 and the 200 come in different housings there is the arbo blend the um, bioplastic housing and the wood housing so quickly just the overview over the mock mills so what can you mill in your mock mills essentially any grain or dried beans for example garbanzo beans or pinto beans you can mill lentils, for example, or corn that is that has been grown for for uh, making corn flour, not popping corn. You can mill rice, quinoa, soybeans, white beans, chia seeds, and so forth. If you have bought a mock mill, you should have received a manual that says exactly what you can mill with these mills. If you don't have the manual anymore, or if you just want to look it up, I'll be leaving links in the description box where you can actually find the manuals and you can look that up. The products that you cannot really mill in these mock mills is anything that's very oily. For example, flax seeds or sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds because the oil will kind of gum up the granite um, grinding stones and make it almost impossible to grind grains afterwards. However, sometimes you may have accidentally done it or on purpose, or let's say you wanted to grind your own spices, for example, black pepper, but you don't want your einkorn bread to taste like black pepper, you might want to actually clean your muck mill. So now I'm gonna show you how you can open them for cleaning and then we'll talk about how to clean them if they are gummed up or if they have anything inside of them. They all have the same grinding mechanism, which I will show you right now. And let's move this one over here for a moment. I want to show you the mock mill attachment first. I always like to take out this little chute here because it is going to be in the way. It actually just clamps right in there and you can see that there's two little holes. And then all you do is you unscrew this dial here that you use to choose the fineness for the flour and it only goes to a certain point. And then you take it out. Now you stand it on the three springs and move the housing down just like so. And then there is a little I don't even know what it's called, but you can turn it and, and you can open it. 
So here you see I have a little bit of grain residue in it. Um, there's some probably einkorn <laughs> in there, and um, but it's not actually bad because it's grain, it's very dry. So technically I don't really need to clean it. You can always take a brush if you want to do that and just brush it very carefully and then reassemble it. And in order to put it back together, you simply reverse that process. You place this on here, find the little cutouts here. There's a few of them, so you need to find the right ones. And then you slide them into their resting place. You put the housing back on all the way down. Until you see no gap here. And then you simply place this one on here. And tighten it. So that's how you open up and clean your mock mill attachment and then you can put the chute on there. I've got some little flower dusting here on my table from opening it. The Magma 100 or 200 in this Arbo Blend housing works similar. However, first you unscrew this lever here because that keeps the housing attached to it. You take off the lid and then there is two and I can show you that. Oh, and by the way, with the machines that you plug into the wall, you always want to unplug them before you clean them. I think that's kind of obvious. You want to press in these two little tabs here and then it simply comes apart. You can take this part out and we get a lot of flower dusting here. And here is your grinding mechanisms. When you put it back together, you want to make sure that you line this up right here then you screw this back on and make sure that this little um, receptacle here for your screw is here on the right hand side and you simply snap this back on there's your lid and then you tighten the screw back on. Now for the mock melts in the wooden housing, I think that it could not be easier than this. I like to take the lid off first and all you do is simply and unscrew the hopper, take it out, and here it is. Now, as you can see, there is some flaxseed in here that is something oily that you're not technically supposed to mill with your mock mill. I want to just quickly show you before I show you how we are going to clean this, that there are these little springs in here when you take this apart you have to make sure that the springs are still in here before you put this back on and you simply put the hopper back on and tighten it the hopper when you turn it that is actually also your dial for choosing the coarseness or fineness of the flour you're milling and I will leave this on a coarser setting. Now we'll clean this. All you need really is 
a half a cup of white rice. You can use really simple, inexpensive white rice. We will turn this on. And you can see here that I have some little bits and pieces of flaxseed in here. However, what I will do now is make the flour a little finer and repeat this process. I'll put this in a white bowl. It's actually easier to maneuver it around. So simply repeat the same step, turn on the mill. And this back up here. Now we'll make this a little finer, maybe three quarters of the way. And now I'm making it very fine. And last time through. Not only do you have really fine rice flour now, let's have a look at the inside here. Let's first unplug it. Now you can see that the grindstone is completely white. There's nothing on it. You can, if you wanted to, find a, a small brush and just brush the flour off. So here's a small brush and you can simply brush everything that's stuck on there off your grindstones. And if you find a little bit of uh, residue here from whatever you were milling before, you can simply repeat the process until the ceramic stones are completely clean and only have white flour on them. And then all you do is you Put this back together just like so. Screw the hopper back on. And continue milling. So that's really all there is. If you are wondering about the similarities of these three and the differences, I have an entire video here in which I explain all of these. Thank you so much for watching and joining me in my kitchen. And I'll see you in the next video.